Hello, my name is Kanan Panchal and today we shall discuss the fundamentals of rheology. What is rheology? Like many scientific terms, rheology also has a Greek origin. It is broken down into two terms, that is rheo, which means flow, and logos is the science. So the science of flow, of fluids, of liquids, it also includes deformation of solids, it also includes semi-solids in its spectra. All of these things make up the science of rheology. And this term was coined by Eugene Bingham and Crawford. When you do all the experimental characterizations, quantitative studies, you apply all metrics to this science, it is called as rheometry. So this is a very good example of rheology. How nicely is a paste going to come out of the tube when shear is applied? All this study of this formulation comes under rheology. Now let's have a look at different terminologies before we proceed further. For that, please concentrate on this animation here. In the first block, you can see the force is applied perpendicular to the plane of this cube. All right. Such a force when it is perpendicular is called compression. And here you can see force is applied parallel to the plane of this cube. All right. This is called shear stress. If you have guessed it, the compression force is used during tablet compressions and shear stress or such a parallel force is applied during manufacturing of dispersed system like emulsion, suspensions or semi-solids like ointment. Now when you lock at this position, you get something like this. That is initially it was cube. Then on applying shear, it has taken somewhat a rhomboid structure, okay? Now, if we consider that this system is made up of many layers, it's made up of different layers. Each of them are moving at different velocities, all right? You can see the topmost has traveled more distance than the bottom layer, all right? That is because this is moving at a greater speed than the bottommost layer. So the difference in the velocities of the layers is given by dB. And the distance between the topmost and the bottommost layer is given by dr. So shear rate, which is denoted by g, is nothing but the difference of the velocity of the different layers of liquid divided by the distance of their separation. Okay, dV by dr is nothing but rate of shear. Rate of shear or shear rate is used interchangeably. The unit is second inverse. Then shear stress is nothing but the force per unit area which is required to bring about flow. So it is not just any force per area. It is that force per area which brings about flow of a given system. And that is called shear stress or shearing stress. And the units are pascals. Shear strain is more like a geometric property because it deals with the deformation of body due to the shear stress. To what extent has the system undergone change in its shape or size? All that comes with shear strain and the units are radians. So in nature, there exist different kinds of fluids which exhibit different flow behaviors. Thanks to Newton, he did an extensive quantitative study of these different types of fluids. He formulated one law called as Newton's law. So the fluids following this law were classified under Newtonian fluids and the fluids disobeying this law were classified under non-Newtonian fluids. So what is this law? He says that rate of shear is directly proportional to shearing stress. So mathematically it is expressed like this. We know that F is nothing but F dash by A and G is dV by dr. And both of them are proportional. This is the proportionality constant called as eta which is nothing but the coefficient of viscosity or absolute viscosity. In other terms you can call it simply viscosity. 
So when you simplify this, you get eta is equals to F by G. So when we have a plot of shear stress versus shear rate, we have a straight line which passes through the origin. This is a plot for Newtonian fluids only. Now in general, Newton's law is obeyed by liquids of low molecular weight and solutions which are made up of low molecular weight solutes and low molecular weight solvents. Water is a very good example of Newtonian fluids. Now in different textbooks, the axis may change. At times it may also be shear rate versus shear stress, but the meaning of the plot remains same. And Newtonian plot would always be same, a straight line passing through the origin. Now, this is a more scientific definition of viscosity. It is that shearing force which is required to produce a velocity dv of 1 centimeter per second when the planes are separated by a distance of 1 centimeter and the area of these planes are 1 centimeter square each. Now, the units, please take a note of this. This is very important with respect to your GPAT. SI units are Pascal second, which is nothing but 10 poise. Generally, you mention it as millipascal second. So, 1 millipascal second is nothing but 1 centipoise, which is further reduced to 0 0.01 poise. Poise is a unit of CGS system and it can further be written as dyne second per centimeter square. Now, fluidity is just opposite of viscosity. It is the ease with which a fluid can flow. And it is mathematically represented as the reciprocal of viscosity. Phi is equal to 1 by eta. Now, kinematic viscosity is nothing but when you relate the absolute viscosity with the density of the liquid which you are studying. So, mathematically, it is expressed as absolute viscosity divided by the density of the liquid at a specific temperature. This is important to be noted. Now the SI units of kinematic viscosity is meter square or more commonly millimeter square per second and in CGS system it can be written as stokes or centistokes and one millimeter square per second is equal to one centistoke. Now here you can see how differently are the fluids flowing? This is less viscous, so it is flowing more easily. This is more viscous. This is relatively more viscous. And these two fluids are the most viscous as they aren't flowing at all. So now we shall look how does temperature play an important role in determining viscosity. For that, the best example is a burning candle. The entire candle is stiff like a solid, but the top part of a candle flow, melts and flows like a fluid. That is because the top part is exposed to a higher temperature because of this burning wick. As it is exposed to a higher temperature, as the temperature increases, the viscosity of a fluid decreases and the fluidity increases. That is why it flows. This is mathematically given by this equation. It looks similar to the Arrhenius equation, but mind y'all, it is not the same. Here, the absolute viscosity is equated with a constant exponentially raised to the activation energy multiplied by the gas constant multiplied by the absolute temperature, which is measured in Kelvin. Please take a note of this, that the activation energy for flow is about one-third that of the energy of vaporization. Thank you.